Hello and welcome to Ecoterrorism. I'm Zainab Beloun. Bees have been dying recently in larger numbers at an alarming rate, and this global phenomenon, known as colony collapse disorder, is still a mystery largely unsolved. For more of this issue, let's take a look at this report. Insects, in particular bees, are of a great value as other agents of cross-pollination, and many plants entirely depend on bees for their reproduction. In the U.S., honeybees pollinate a $30 billion worth of crops. At some point in history, humans became fully aware of the most important good that is derived from bees, the pollination providing important products such as honey and wax. Today, more than 80 crops of agricultural interest depend on bee pollination or about a third of what one eats requires a bee pollination event. However, the industrialization within the agricultural sector has brought dramatic changes for bees. As a result, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the University of Maryland found out that parasites, disease, genetics, poor nutrition and pesticide exposure are major factors to bees colony collapse disorder. Moreover, the study revealed an estimation of 33% of human-managed hives die every year in the U.S. Yet, the U.S. authorities reject the EU and NGOs' claims of insecticide as prime reason for bee colony collapse. According to Take Part's food editor, pesticides were seen responsible for the fall of 25,000 bumblebees of the linden trees planted in Oregon in the United States, which as a result caused the death of all bees in the area. Beekeeping has become a large-scale business. Some apiarists keep thousands to tens of thousands of colonies and earn money by renting them to farmers that need crop pollination. For this, bees need to be transported over thousands of kilometers and are confronted with new and rather hostile environments including crop monocultures that need heavy protection through pesticides to ensure maximal harvest. Our current growing global population of humans struggles to produce sufficient amounts of food under increasingly more difficult conditions such as global climate change. It is not surprising then that we are losing bees as pollinators, but a full awareness of their decline, value and importance for food production and ecosystem stability is just beginning to emerge and is increasingly more recognized beyond beekeeper and academic borders. Environmental activists argue for the long overdue recognition that bees cannot be treated as another industrial product commodity. What is the response of specialized organizations? Moreover, what would governments respond to such catastrophic situation? Joining us today in the studio is Dr. Dani Abed of the Faculty of Agronomy in the Lebanese University. Thanks for being here, here with us today. Thank you. So to start with a general question about colony collapse disorder, can you define it for us and tell us what it's about? Yes, actually, it's, uh, as we say, it's, uh, it's still a disorder. So uh, we don't know yet uh, uh, what are the different causes mm -hmm. or what, or uh, it's not a disease. Although or, or if it was a disease, we would call it a disease. It's a disorder that means that we don't uh, know yet what are the different uh, causes. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, after making all many, many studies all over the world, uh, we decided that there are nine different causes that may cause this disorder. Mm -hmm. And we are trying in each country to know what are the combination of th these different causes that led to, uh, to this disorder. Surely it's uh, in different parts of the world it's different than the others, meaning that it's in the States it's uh, different than in Europe or in Asia or in the Middle East uh, in, uh, in our area. The nine different causes can be from uh, pesticides, the use of different uh, pesticides, can be also the different antenna that we are using today for, for internet, for, uh, for all the other waves that we are using uh, here and there. There are also all this kind of uh, pollution mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the air pollution to the soil pollution, etc. We have also uh, uh, the, the decrease of uh, the green areas 
that uh, that we have here and there and uh, there are also the what we call the intensification of beekeeping actually you know that we have to transport uh, these uh, bees to uh, for hundreds of kilometers to pollinate different uh, different different crops mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and not to tell also we can uh, import many beekeepers for example in Lebanon would import uh, the bean kui from uh, from America from thousands of kilometers far far from here we just import it and we have to force uh, force it to to live in a completely a different, different in completely different environment mm -hmm. so as to resume there are these nine these nine causes and there's also the varroa and there are also some other diseases that are viruses and uh, and bacteria so nine different causes uh, three or, or and four of them combine together and give us this this uh, this disorder mm -hmm. so why is it so hard to find out what combination of these different causes cause this disorder uh, actually it is difficult because uh, uh, we have some cause uh, we have some of these causes somewhere we don't have it elsewhere mm -hmm. I mean we don't have this intensification of uh, beekeeping uh, outside the US and we found uh, this order this uh, CCD in Europe for example where it's not so intense as it is in the in the US mm -hmm. uh, this is one two as many uh, uh, let's say theories okay we need to make tests again and again to be sure that this is the real uh, cause or not and last and not least sometimes we are sure about one uh, one cause but because uh, this may harm for example a company or may harm for another country or may have economical harms for the others uh, you will find some uh, different results from other researchers saying no for example uh, the pesticides mm -hmm. the pesticides has been more than 10 or 20 years that many uh, beekeepers or let's say bee lovers are sure that these kind of pesticides are harmful for the bees and they had courts and they had fights and it's not it's just lately that in the European Union they uh, they agreed they they yeah, they banned some uh, some pesticides because they were sure that uh, maybe they are not the only responsible for the CCD or the responsible of the CCD, but, but they, they are, are partly responsible. They are part of the problem. So it's also about political and corporate interests. In a in a in a way, it's all it's all about. Uh, politics. Mm -hmm. So do you think, is there research currently being done, for example, say in Lebanon or in the Middle East on the uh, effects of CCD in this area, or is this something that we are not currently doing at the moment? Um, currently at the moment, unfortunately, we are uh, mainly uh, counting, let's say, the, the bees that are dying. We are, we are measuring how many bees we are losing mm -hmm. each year. Uh, is this uh, the Lebanese university? Or uh, is it is on, uh, on the Liban in the Lebanese uh, university. We are checking with the different apiaries, with the different beekeepers about the loss. Because, you know, the CCD is... Uh, uh, beekeepers are aware of most, most of the others' problems that are facing with the bees. Mm -hmm. So let's say if it's uh, a disease or it is a virus or it's a poison, they, they can tell and they, they see they see and they can tell us, okay, it was a slow disease, it was a sudden poisoning, etc. Mm -hmm. With the CCD, it's completely different. You are working with your bees today, you c the, not the, the next day you come and you don't find anything mm -hmm. in, the, in the hive. Most of the bees are uh, left, even the queen is not, is not here anymore. Though the bees, they had enough work to do, they had enough uh, food and they even have babies they even have the larvas and uh, and eggs mm -hmm. and usually bees they don't leave them uh, unattended like they are doing with the uh, with the ccd mm -hmm. so what we are trying to do now is to to know what are the different causes that led to ccd we are trying to make awareness with the beekeepers to to know exactly what is uh, ccd because uh, a beekeeper would call saying that he had uh, a huge problem with the ccd and when you go there, you find other reasons uh, or other symptoms. They they don't uh, match with uh, with the real uh, with the real CCD. Mm -hmm. uh, to say the truth, uh, in the Middle East, we didn't uh, we didn't have this uh, drastic, let's say, 
uh, result that they had in the US or in, in Europe. We didn't uh, lose around 70% of our bees or of our apiaries. But uh, it was really uh, bad for some beekeepers in some, uh, in some areas. For example, uh, after having a war, mm -hmm. let's say in 2006 uh, that we had uh, in Lebanon. It uh, affected the bees. Uh, they, affected, they, affected, uh, they affected the bees. We had one more cause that, uh, that was added. Mm -hmm. And when, when you have the combination of three or four causes, we went directly and we saw that uh, we lost we lost our bees. Mm -hmm. Do you think the differences between here and, say, the United States in terms of how many bees we've been losing is uh, perhaps due to beekeeping practices, the, the differences that we have between here and there? Uh, it, it depends on the practices, for sure. Mm -hmm. It depends Maybe also... Maybe the pesticides that we use. On the pesticides we're using. It, defend, it depends also on the degree of uh, uh, how polluted uh, is the, the environment, is or the the environment the let's say the air or, or, or the soil. And it also depends on the kind of bees they are using, the types. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, ours, uh, which is uh, Apis mellifera syriaca, is known to be more uh, resistant. Mm -hmm. Resilient, more, more stronger. E exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Stronger. And therefore, I think this is, this is an important point if we can make some more research about... Uh, why we don't have that much, why we were not so affected by the CCD. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe the, the, re the, reason, the, use, the use of Apis mellifera syriaca that we have uh, would be a solution or a, or a part of the solution uh, for the CCD. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference in terms of the levels of disappearances of different types of bees. True. Mm -hmm. One, yes. uh, how big are these differences? Uh, well, uh, seventy percent, for example, in the in the U.S. in some uh, in some years, in in the MENA region here, we never went uh, above twenty to thirty. Mm -hmm. But say, for example, between honeybees or bumblebees, or uh, I'm speaking mainly about honeybees. Mm -hmm. uh, even uh, there are many types of honeybees. Mm -hmm. Uh, I cannot tell anything about the bumblebees in Lebanon. Something very different. It's, uh, we actually we don't have we uh, we don't have any research re related mm -hmm. to uh, to bumble uh, to bumblebees. Uh, we use more uh, the honeybees, mm -hmm. uh, and even among the honeybees, there are different uh, there are different types. We are using the local uh, the local one, while in the U.S. they are using more the American. Mm -hmm. uh, types of honeybees. Thank you very much, Dr. Dani Abed. We'll be back. We're going to be going off for a short break, but please stay tuned. Around the world, outside the mainstream, anywhere, everywhere, an idea of your land, of your creation. A new media and a new era. Will it take the lead in the future? I believe so. This is Underground. Underground, when vague turns to clarity. Joining us by phone right now is Miriam Hinane, the director of Vanishing of the Bees and founder of Honey Colony. First of all, before we go uh, to speaking with her, we'll be taking a look at a short trailer. Please stay tuned. For several years now, honey bees have been mysteriously disappearing all over the world. And believe me, the little bee is a big deal. Well, there's a bee. I have these bee scientists found a couple days ago. It was full of bees. Three hours later, nobody home. They just took off. Do you like fruits and vegetables? Then you like bees. Bees pollinate a third of our diet. And without bees taking pollen from one apple tree to another apple tree, you wouldn't get any apples. 
I'm the fifth generation in beekeeping. We're here the second week of February since Thanksgiving Day. We've <laughs> virtually lost the operation to the bees just dying. of the Holocaust. This is, uh, this is a bee holocaust right here. Standing in Brett's 80s bee yard out here, you know, 15 miles west of here, that's one of the one of the worst days of my life. I mean, standing there watching, looking at, I mean, the devastation. I'm narrating the documentary, Vanishing of the Bees, because I'm concerned about bees, and I know this film can help turn this grave situation into an opportunity for people to come together and make changes for the good of the bees and everything else on our planet. We don't have to wait for the government to act on some of these issues. We can do something today. I had been hearing a lot about bees not having enough food, and we decided to plant some. Yeah. Save our bees! Save our agriculture! We're in a war here, and, and we're going to lose a percentage of our troops consistently. We're, we're going to keep fighting. Thanks, Ms. Hanan, for joining us today. Ms. Hanan, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. So first of all, it is mentioned in the trailer of The Vanishing of the Bees that the value of honeybees can be estimated at $16 billion in the United States alone. So how will it affect the economy of bees if uh, the economy if bees continue to disappear at this alarming rate? Well, um, we, how would it affect our economy? I mean, it's about 18, 18 billion just in the U.S., um, a lot more worldwide, and it would affect our food supply. Um, price, prices for food would rise. Uh, we would have to, in the United States, probably import more food, and import food that's probably sprayed with pesticides that's illegal in uh, the U.S., but legal in other countries, and, and it would be a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little more about the making of Vanishing of the Bees? What made you decide to start making this film? Uh, well, I had a near-death experience about maybe 10 years prior. I was hit by a Ford Explorer and dragged 50 feet and broke several bones, and. I had been a freelance journalist, and I was looking to do something that made a difference and uh, something that was of service. I had worked on a on an Exxon um, on a on a program on the Exxon Valdez oil spill for the Sierra Club and Robert Greenwald, who's a, a well-known filmmaker. And George, um, my co-director, and I decided we were going to collaborate, and. Um, he said that the bees, he had heard the bees were, were dying. This was 2007 and thought it would make a great uh, film. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm an investigative journalist, and I did some research. And when I saw that the, the characteristics of colony collapse, one of the symptoms is that the bees abandon the queen and they abandon the babies, the brood. And I saw that as a direct parallel to us abandoning Mother Earth and I was also very drawn by the fact that bees are a matriarchal society. And then bees literally started uh, flying into my life. And um, but that's, that's how it, it happened. We started traveling around the U.S. and the world to put this film together. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it has had the effect that you wanted it to have? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I felt in my gut that this, well, this was going to be a well-known film and that this film needed to be made. And I'm delighted by the, the way it's, it's helped raise the consciousness on honeybees. Um, I'm, I'm completely devoted to saving bees and helping empower people to be their own best health advocate and also to know about our food supply and, and the right to have clean food and so, and so, so yes, I, I'm, I'm happy that it's, it's, it's a well-known film today. Mm -hmm. 
So if we talk a little more about colony collapse disorder, how long has it been going on and do you think it will continue for much longer if we don't pay it as much attention as we should be? So colony collapse disorder, quote unquote, um, if you look at uh, France, they started having the symptoms, also, although they called it MAD-B, the disease, uh, another name. It, it started in um, the mid-90s because that's when the systemic pesticides were introduced in France. Um, in the U.S., David Hackenberg, who's a commercial beekeeper, sounded the alarm in around 2007. It probably started kind of roughly in 2006, so that's been, um, you know, s s several years now, seven, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I think it will absolutely continue as long as these poisons are being used. Mm -hmm. So it seems clear that with directing Vanishing of the Bees and founding Honey Colony, you believe in the power of media to raise awareness and say make a difference in the plight of bees and our environment. So how significant of a role do you think media should be playing? Uh, well, I actually believe that human beings can be the change and that it's up to each and every one of us to be the change that we want to see in the world and not wait for um, big ag or government to change their policies because these poisons make tons of money and they care about the bottom line. Um, as far as the media, I, I think that the bees, uh, I say this a lot, are on our, the forefront of our consciousness more than ever before. Um, bees were on the cover of Time last week. However, that article it could have been printed, as far as I'm concerned, in 2009. It's <laughs> not really any old news, so maybe bees getting on the cover of Time means that it's finally officially reached mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I'm a journalist, but I, I, I can't say that I'm too proud of, of journalism today. I, I think uh, that mainstream media is a joke. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ms. Hanain. We'll be back to our guest in the studio, Dr. Dani Abed. Uh, so can you tell us more about what you think of this? Do you think that media should play a bigger role, or do you think it should be more uh, up to us humans to ma be making a difference in this issue? Uh, in order to have uh, a good result, I think the, the we need synergy. Mm -hmm. And this is what we uh, usually learn from the bees. In a, in a beehive, you know, everybody helps. Mm -hmm. Everybody helps everybody. You have you have the queen. She's giving the order, and all the other uh, worker bees. Worker, worker bees. They uh, they clean uh, they clean the hive. Uh, the hive. Uh, we we like to say about the dance of the bees. Actually, when a bee scout bee comes back uh, with uh, with honey, mm -hmm. uh, she would make a special dance, telling all the other bees uh, how far is the place and how much uh, food they will gain if they go there. And you have exact um, an exact amount or number of bees going there and bringing all the food for the for the hive. So uh, and if something goes wrong to the to the hive, you see all the bees. Uh, making the alarm and everybody is, is helping in uh, in defending the beehive. So in a way, if we want, we want this uh, creature that has uh, more than uh, 40 million years now on Earth, and it's uh, it's a real uh, environmental uh, indicator. Mm -hmm. uh, we we really need synergy between beekeepers, uh, bee lovers, as I like to to call them, between uh, media. Uh, science, uh, research, uh, and uh, even we can go to social media today that, uh, that helps. I think uh, Ms. Hinein uh, worked a lot on, on social media about, uh, about, about this, uh, this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, as each one of us, e each one of us can help in, in having more green area for the, uh, for the bees. Uh, be aware that these pesticides, I mean, these pesticides, if they are killing bees, uh, these tiny, uh, tiny creatures. That means that, uh, in a way, they are uh, killing us. They, they, they will, they will <laughs> kill us. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> they will eventually, they they are killing us. I'm I'm sure that uh, colony co uh, the colony collapse disorder is an alarm mm -hmm. that the bees wanted to tell us that something is going wrong 
there is a uh, there is a terrorism for the uh, for the environment environment for the ecology mm -hmm. and the bees they uh, they don't th this is the how they are talking to us mm -hmm. uh, and eventually we have to listen to them and we have we have to act on all the possible all the possible uh, levels uh, everybody now is aware about what Einstein said that uh, without uh, without bees without pollination uh, the human beings won't have more than four years to live uh, mm -hmm. to live on Earth. Uh, maybe this is not, uh, let's say, uh, exact uh, an exact saying, but it it shows how important are the bees, uh, how important are the bees for us, and uh, so we have to make a real synergy, help each other mm -hmm. to uh, to save to save uh, to save uh, the bees for them first and also uh, for also for us because mm -hmm. a third of what we are eating comes from uh, from the bees and the from their pollination uh, or pollinating activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dr. Abed, as a kind of final question, what do you think we should be doing to make sure that bees don't disappear in the future? Uh, we, we really have to stop uh, the usage of, this, uh, of these pesticides, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are proven that are uh, that are killing uh, killing the bees. We have to stop inventing new uh, pesticides that will sure be killing uh, killing our bees. Mm -hmm. On the beekeeping uh, side, uh, surely we don't have to intensify that much and uh, take the bees uh, thousands of kilometers only to pollinate our uh, our food. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can uh, we can keep the bees where they are, help them during winter to have some uh, some of their food, and uh, and and this is it. And as for the for the others, for the grand public, for the people, uh, it's uh, it's a tiny creature that uh, that that is helping us uh, eat more uh, more honey mm -hmm. because it it helps uh, it helps also have more and more green area near uh, near the houses. Uh, hopefully, not everywhere. Like in Lebanon, we have uh, less and less uh, green spaces. Green, green, uh, green spaces. And last and not least, we have also to uh, have more and more res research about mm -hmm. the, w the welfare of uh, of bees and how to keep them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks to Dr. Dani Abed for joining us in the studio and to Ms. Maryam Hanain for joining us by phone. That's it for today. This was Eco Terrorism, and I'm Zainab Beyloun. See you next week. Thank you.